Hi, Checkmates. My name is Moti Sagi, the Checkpoint uh, Chief Evangelist, and we're here today with a special bulletin to discuss the Log4j incident. With me today are two of the smartest people in Checkpoint, Lotem and Dianiv. Uh, Lotem, do you want to present yourself? Yeah, I'm the Director of uh, Threat Intelligence and Research, and we basically investigated this event and assisted customers with uh, remediating their uh, environments. Thank you. Yaniv? Hi, so I'm Yaniv, Head of Product Management for Threat Prevention. What we did following Thursday is mainly making sure that we have all the protections in place and all the guides for our customers to make sure they have their protection in place. Nice Good. to meet you. So we're going to ask you a few questions, but before we do, in Checkmate we have a tradition, we're geeks, we have a positive mindset, and I'd like to share with you some of the top memes that we've seen uh, surfacing in the last few days. First one is actually not even a meme. It's actually an actual tweet from Apache from June 4th stating that the Ingenuity, the Mars 2020 helicopter mission, is powered by Apache Log4j. Talk about questionable customer reference and how it comes back to haunt us. Second one refers to the weekend that we all had the IT admins and people in the cybersecurity industries and customers as a whole. Third one, this is one of the tasks, the first task that we had to do to map our application to see where, where we run log4j. Then our significant other and then couple, couple's life, followed by references to the geek's favorite movies, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, etc. Incident response, team ready for the holidays and log4j behind them. The Office, another geek uh, favorite show, and um, one of my favorites, my plan to take time of work, and then the Log4j vulnerability. And this is a look, a glimpse into the future. So we left a bit. Now let's uh, go to the real question. We'll start with you, Lotte. Tell us, what do we know at this point of time about this vulnerability, and what exactly happened? Okay, so today we know much more than we knew, for example, on Friday. Uh, today we know, according to Bleeping Computer, that uh, it was November 24 uh, when Alibaba, the Chinese giant, uh, reported uh, to Apache uh, for this vulnerability. Uh, and only on the 9th of December, uh, we were all informed that there is something suspicious happening with Log4j um, version 2. Uh, the fork of Log4j uh, managed by uh, Apache and only on uh, December 10, the day after, uh, we uh, all introduced with uh, exploits that could be found anywhere on the internet. Um, and what happened is actually that um, anyone could uh, very easily using any string actually to run commands over the Log4j uh, library uh, that's responsible for logging our activity on different Java applications. Um, and because it was so simple, it was also uh, very easily exploited and utilized. Uh, and we saw very a lot of versions uh, of uh, the exploits on GitHub and anywhere on the internet. And very quickly, threat actors and scanners, security scanners, uh, featured this uh, vulnerability into their arsenal. Um, and from there on, we saw uh, just an uh, exploit storm, uh, all the internet uh, was flooded with the uh, uh, exploitation attempts of this vulnerability, uh, which is, I think, um, the most rapid uh, implement implementation i ever seen of a so powerful uh, vulnerability. So maybe shed some light on the, um, in terms of spread. So yeah, uh, we are talking about uh, it was so uh, rapid that um, it, in a few hours, it was only, I think, nine hours from uh, the point that we placed IPS, IPS uh, uh, signature that we saw something like uh, 50,000 uh, exploitation attempts and scans. And by now, it's, it is over a million uh, attempts. And we're talking about something like uh, uh, 100 exploits per, per minute, which is huge. Um, why it's so huge? Because it, Log4j is actually uh, everywhere. We are not, for example, in other supply chain attacks, 
uh, and other vulnerabilities, we, uh, we usually know what are the applications that are vulnerable. Uh, but here, um, customers and users uh, are not aware if the, uh, the Java applications that they use are actually vulnerable to this uh, uh, vulnerability, and they cannot mitigate it very uh, easily. And, and therefore, even if they think they succeeded in mitigating the, uh, the network, uh, they are still vulnerable and only uh, a solid protection that uh, uh, prevent attackers in accessing this application is capable of preventing the attack. I have to tell you, it sounds to me like a pandemic. Right. It's only a, a cyber one. Right. You, with you reproduction rate, with exponential growth, with uh, uh, mitigations, etc. Definitely. We're talking about a population which is vulnerable um, to uh, extreme, extremely powerful um, exploit vulnerability. Um, and when they both meet, uh, it means that it's getting uh, infectious in minutes. Um, and and Put COVID to shame. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. This is the, the, Mars, the Mars 2020 of the, of the cyber, definitely. Yeah, I understand. Thanks. Yaniv, was Checkpoint infrastructure and products affected from this attack? Well, short answer, answer is no. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, if you look on all of uh, Checkpoint backend uh, services like Threat Cloud and other uh, support services that we have, we tested it uh, since uh, last uh, Thursday, December 9th, and all of our uh, uh, code is in place, updated, all the log4j libraries are up to date and are not vulnerable. So everything is tested and secured. With regards to the products, so we have Quantum Family, Harmony and, uh, and CloudGuard, also the Infinity Vision uh, product portfolio. All of them, all of the developers, the relevant developers have scanned that, uh, these libraries also for Log4j libraries within the code. Similar, I think, to any other security vendor in the industry and other companies who did that since uh, in the last uh, three days. Uh, all of that is being secured now. Uh, we verified it. So uh, again, we are safe, secured but we're still in alert and keep our eyes open I for any development. I, I heard that there are instances that we do use Log4j, but the implementation that we use it doesn't make it vulnerable. Correct, they are not vulnerable. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And um, what about Checkpoint products? How, how yeah. does it protect against the attack? So, so this is a great question because uh, all of Checkpoint products and, and all of Checkpoint products can protect our customers from the Log4j uh, vulnerability. But the main question is, how do you configure it or do you use it correctly? And this is what we did in the product management uh, area in the last three days, trying to put together all the guidelines and steps for our customers to make sure that their products, checkpoint products, are in place and are set correctly to prevention. Meaning if you have a quantum gateway and we have the IPS ga blade in the quantum gateway, the IPS uh, gateway is always up to date. But the question to our customers, do you in, have you enabled that option to automatically update it? Or do you still do it in the manual process? So if you do it automatically, you're safe. We can give you the guidelines to go and make sure in the, in the GUI that you, know, you have the protections and you can see uh, relevant logs, etc. But if you're not, go ahead, shift everything to, pre to prevention, make sure you have the right package installed, and then you can, uh, let's say, rest sure that none of the for, uh, log4j vulnerabilities will impact you. Same goes for uh, CloudGuard. We have two products that can cover today log4j vulnerability. One is the AppSec, CloudGuard application security for web applications. Here, all the protections are up to date. Even if you don't, you don't have the options to manually update it or, auto, or uh, automatically configure it. It's a SaaS service. Yes, exactly. However, you can uh, switch the configuration to detect or prevent. Make sure that you have everything in prevention mode. Uh, we see that already. We, see, we have seen the logs, as Lotte mentioned. We know that our customers are exposed to uh, that vulnerability. Uh, we know that attackers are trying to, uh, to expose their environment. Make sure that you have the protection in prevention mode. And you can, again, be sure that you are safe. Uh, all of your web applications are protected from that. Same goes for workload protection, Lambda functions, uh, for example. We have a machine learning base to protect workload, lambda, uh, workloads in the cloud. Uh, that can also, that is also covering that vulnerability. Also make sure that the product is in prevention mode. We have uh, um, published a blog post about it, showing, giving you all the steps, all the guidelines, all the links, relevant things that you need to do. It should follow appear up on, on the screen now. Yes. Like right around here or here. Yeah, somewhere probably here. <laughs> there. Yes. Somewhere mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Okay. So, so make sure that you have everything in place, follow the guidelines, 
Uh, same goes for Checkpoint NDR product that can give you, uh, let's say, a higher level of visibility to uh, network logs. Instead of work through the smart console of all of the IPS logs, you can do it with the NDR and give you a high, uh, high level view of everything. And with the right click, you can terminate and do any re remediation to a host that may be vulnerable to that uh, vulnerability. And, and finally, you have, we have SourceGuard. SourceGuard is, uh, is a product that can scan your source code and, and check if you have the vulnerable libraries already all in, in place instead of having them uh, and updated. And open source Of libraries, course, everything. Reputation-based, based on who uh, actually committed that code and, and what libraries, what is the reputation that of the third-party libraries that you use. Uh, use that as well. It's in the Infinity Portal. Very easy to use. Great. I do want to highlight one more thing, if uh, in your permission. Uh, I saw a post from Oded Gonda, the, our Vice President of Innovation, that said that CloudGuard AppSec, since it uses AI for protection, actually protected it preemptively, meaning with no signature. Correct. Can you validate that? Yeah, that's the power of AI, basically. Every product that is using uh, AI-based models, like deep learning models or machine learning models, it means that it is protected from zero-day attacks, from zero-day vulnerabilities, from the things that haven't been seen before. The zero days, basically. And if you have that um, used in your environment and you trust Checkpoint to train these models to be accurate enough, it means that you also protect from the unknown, from the things that we've seen in the past. They may be similar to the new things. This is where the machine learning model uh, comes into play and block this attack, even if it hasn't seen that before. Great. Lotem, what can you recommend people to do in order to be prepared for a similar attack in the future? Okay, so first of all, I'll, I'll continue with the message of prevention. So uh, we need to, to, to make sure that uh, we are uh, ready to activate protections on prevention immediately and to uh, gain time for internal investigation. I know that most of you uh, probably uh, did internal investigations and tried to see whether you... Um, you all applications that use Log4j2. Uh, uh, and in order to allow you to do that uh, with no stress, uh, prevention is, uh, of course, the, uh, the basic. Uh, but I also uh, recommend to, uh, to maintain a security posture that is uh, multi-layered, because we understand, for example, that uh, if by any chance um, there is application that still communicates with the internet and is not behind IPS. Uh, at least it has something that uh, protects uh, at the endpoint uh, or uh, its communication with other assets uh, within the network or uh, in the segment. Um, so multi-layer protection is something that uh, is uh, critical f to uh, prevent any further damage um, uh, after one application was compromised. Um, and of course, um, maintain everything, uh, your logs retention is very important for you to try and understand if something uh, went wrong. Uh, and we are at Checkpoint Research, uh, do our best to provide uh, immediate information and intelligence into our products to, uh, to protect you even if uh, uh, you are not aware of it, for example. So we protect a lot of, uh, uh, against a lot of uh, uh, threats that are not being discussed and they are uh, out, uh, under, uh, under our radar, uh, but we do it for you, so also um, enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> do you have something to add here? Yes, I think first, increase your level of urgency. Do everything fast. Uh, what we saw from uh, similar attacks in 2021 with software vulnerabilities, mainly the Exchange Server vulnerability in March, that you needed to take all your actions, all your steps in the days or weeks after the attack, because what happened after three weeks uh, when the software vulnerability of the Exchange Server has been reported, and we saw that from our research team, is a huge wave of a ransomware uh, storm. And, and this is why the coming two weeks or three weeks are critical. Make sure that you are well protected using all the security products that you can, that you need in order to protect your environment. If you don't have them, we have the hotline of Checkpoint. Feel free to reach out to our incident response or professional services teams, and we'll be there for you. But do things fast and make sure that you're well protected because the wave is still ahead of us. It's not, it hasn't passed yet. Wow. 
powerful words. Yeah, that's reality. Guys and girls, stay safe, stay vigilant, and stay secured. Thank you. See you next time.